We all know by now that the Airbus has stopped production of the famous Jumbo Jet A380. But what really caused the failure of the A380? After all, it is a legendary aircraft, the biggest the world has ever seen. Its spacious, comfortable experience made it a favorite with flyers all over the world. So why didn't it get the success we all hoped? On the other hand, the Boeing 777X has found an unpredicted new source of customers from those airlines who are looking to replace their 747 or the A380 fleets. The upcoming aircraft from Boeing has won popularity as the next must-have big aircraft on the market as Airbus and Boeing phase out their jumbo jets. According to Boeing, the order book for the new 777X has far exceeded the previous version of the 777 series even before their respective launches. There are multiple reasons the A380 has failed, from problems in filling in capacity to the sheer size of the aircraft and the way that limits where it can and where it can land. But we think we know the real reason it failed and it's all because of Boeing. So did the 777X put the final nail in the coffin of A380? Stay with me in this another aviation related video from Gadgets and Facts to have a detailed look into that. As always, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so quickly as soon as possible. So what does the 777X does better than the A380? In some ways, the A380 is the better aircraft, at least on paper. It's a real cloud pleasure as far as passengers are concerned, and its operational stats don't look bad either went to full to capacity in its eye-watering 853 passenger configuration, no other aircraft can even come close in terms of cost per passenger per seat per journey. But that doesn't take into account other factors. Operating with a passenger load of 853 would increase the weight both from passenger and baggage, which reduces the efficiency and range. It would also require more crew members to remain compliant with crew to passenger ratios which would make the flight more expensive to operate. Most carriers operate the A380 with two or three classes, sitting around 550 to 600 passengers. Even then, it can be difficult to fill all the seats, which adds massively to the overhead of running a flight. The A380 was designed to alleviate infrastructure problems. In 2007, when it was entered the commercial service, airports were congested and the A380 was seen as the solution to the problem. However, it inadvertently created a whole new set of problems for the airports itself. The biggest downside of the A380 is its gigantic size of the aircraft. Its sheer dimensions mean entire airports need to be reconfigured to accommodate the big bird. It's kind of ironic that an aircraft designed to overcome infrastructure challenges has served to generate a whole bunch of infrastructure challenges of its own. Preparing an airport for the A380 can cost millions. New piers need to be constructed, separate gates need to be installed, and runways also need to be extended to allow the giant jumbo to land. An example is at Copenhagen Airport where the A380 modification costed the airport close to $50 million. As a result, the A380 is limited to service in just 60 cities worldwide. While Airbus argue that the 60 cities are the strategic hubs, the lack of flexibility of their routes has been a major turnoff for carriers though. The huge wingspan required to fly an aircraft that seats 400 plus passengers perhaps contributed to the downfall of A380. But it's something which Boeing have overcome with a little nifty bit of design work. On the other hand, the 777X is capable of landing at pretty much any airport which can serve the 777 and the 787 Dreamliner, which to be frank is most of the important airports worldwide. This is because the 777X has been built with unique folding wingtips design, which put it in the ICAO code E, which basically means 
there are no gate or runway modifications required. In a last ditch effort to attract more orders, Airbus announced a revamped version of the A380 dubbed A380 Plus, which Airbus said would drive down the operating cost by around 13% per seat. However, Boeing's achievement of widening the choice of city pairs with the 777X totally trumps the A380 Plus. It's a case of wing tips beating the winglets, hands down. Apart from these reasons, there is the real rub. With low order numbers and high production cost, the A380 cost almost $450 million for an airline to purchase. The 777X, on the other hand, is being retailed at between $395 to $425 million. And airlines can probably get a very good discount if they are placing a large order. That's a huge draw for the carriers and one of the reasons the 777X beats the A380 in our opinion. These are the primary reasons we think why the 777X has finally forced Airbus to stop production of the jumbo jet. The sad fact is that the Airbus A380 was designed for a problem that doesn't really exist anymore. When it entered commercial service 12 years ago, the world's airport were operating at full capacity. Commercial hubs were overcrowded and carriers just could not put on enough flights to meet the rising demand. A larger aircraft was predicted to be just the ticket, carrying more passengers further all in one go. However, since then, huge investment at airports all over the globe have improved the situation. Capacity is still close to peak, but advancement in efficiencies of smaller jets, not to mention in air traffic control system, mean it's cheaper and easier to fly to three or even four smaller aircraft than to operate one or two big A380s. Passengers want to get there where they are going, with no interruptions. Nobody wants to transit through a crowded mega hub. They want to ride a plane which takes them from point to point which is not always possible on the Super Jumbo. So, the A380 is out and 787, A350 and the forthcoming 777X are in. Airbus took a gamble with the A380 which costed them billions and ultimately forced to stop production. So, what do you guys think about this? Did I miss any possible reason? Please do let me know in the comment section below. As always, please do subscribe to my channel and like and share this video with all your aviation enthusiast friends. I will see you guys in another exciting video on this channel.